Looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke up, Your Honor. I have no defense. And that's when mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Called to the stand was God's saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. I stood there and wondered, well, how can this be that someone so guilty had just been set free? My chains, they were broken. I felt born again. The moment that mercy walked in, mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Called to the stand was God's saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. I stood there and wondered, well, how can this be that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains they were broken i felt born again the moment that mercy walked in mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand was God's saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in, oh, the blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. Forgiven. walked in that day you know you, you can't see that mercy amen but you can sure feel it praise the Lord and it's the goodness of God that's what mercy is amen that he gives us something we don't deserve amen and none of us here today deserve salvation but the Bible said it, that it's a free gift Amen. A free gift, Brother Will. Don't cost us anything. Amen. And I'm glad, amen, that it was free and the price was paid for whosoever will. Amen. If you got your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn with me, if you will, over into the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5.
When Brother Will was singing that song, I thought, well, let's go sort of fit right in with the message that I have tonight. And you know, God don't make no mistakes, does he? Amen. So I appreciate that, Brother Will, very much. Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 1. He said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That's Brother Keith, if he will, to pray over the reading of the Word of God there. Amen. Amen. You know, according to the Bible, there's only one way that we can have access today to God. Amen. Amen. And that's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brother Buck, Jesus made it plain whenever he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen, that there's no way, Sister Betty, today that we can get into heaven without coming through Jesus Christ. Amen, there's no way we can come to Jesus except God would draw us tonight. Amen, Amen. so God sort of, in a way of putting it, not taking away from anything, but he draws us to himself, Brother Amen. Jimmy. Amen, because the Bible said in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Amen. The Word came down and it, it dwelled among men that the Word became flesh, which was Jesus Christ, that came down to this earth. Yes. Amen. And Brother Jimmy, He dwelled among men down here. Yes. Amen. Dwelled among the people, just like we're dwelling among one another here tonight. Yes. Amen. He walked in this body of flesh. Amen. He was God, oh glory, <laughs> God incarnate. He was God in the Spirit but man in the body. Amen. Amen. And he was a man that was of perfection. You know, sometimes when you look at people and you, you, know, you feel like, boy, they think they're a perfectionist, don't they? But Jesus Christ was a perfectionist. Brother Buck, the Bible teaches us that he was a man that knew no sin... Neither was there any guile that was found in his mouth. And he had to live a life of perfection to be accepted of God the Father. Amen. When God sent Jesus Christ down to this earth, and, and then, so to speak, Jesus agreed to come down to this earth. Amen. And he knew that he was going to be dwelling among the sinners. Amen. Because whenever he dwelt among the people just like you and me, I mean, the Bible tells us that we were born in sin. Amen. And shaped into iniquity. Amen. That we were born into this old body down here that Brother Keith is 100% subject to sin. Amen. Whenever we were first born, Brother Buck, the, the first desire really we had was to sin. Amen. It was a sin of deception. Amen, that as just a small little baby, and you know I've said it before, but just as a small little baby, Brother Jimmy, to find the desire to sin, amen, that little baby, whenever it's laying there as innocent as everything, amen, but it wants attention, amen, it, it's, it's greatest, I, I won't say it's a lie, Sister Betty, but it's greatest deception is to make you think that it's hungry. Amen. It'll cry and cry and cry, Brother Mark, till you stick that bottle in its mouth. And a lot of times when you stick the bottle in its mouth because you think it's hungry and it spits the bottle out. Amen. It's saying, I'm not hungry. I just want your attention. Amen. So, you know, that is, that's why I said, you know, we were born to be, to be a deceiver. Amen. But because of Jesus Christ, amen, all that deception, all that sin, can be forgiven. Amen? Amen. And the, the Bible here 
in the, that first verse of chapter 5 of Romans there, it said, therefore, or for that reason, sort of what that means, okay? For the reason of Jesus Christ, amen, that we being justified by faith. What do you mean for his reason? Because he gave his life, amen, that Sister Betty, every sinner could have the opportunity to be saved. Amen. It doesn't matter how vile we've been. Amen. It don't matter, amen, what we've done in our life because, amen, the, on over in the sixth chapter there of the book of Romans, it said we've all sinned. We've all came short of the glory of God. Amen. So it took Jesus Christ to come down to this earth Amen. And give his life on a cross of Calvary Amen. that we could have eternal life tonight. Right. Amen. You know, we just celebrated, you know, Easter. Amen. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And a lot of people today still have not accepted that. Amen. I mean, there's a lot of people that, Sister Kathy, they've not accepted the death of Jesus. Brother Buck, there's a lot that's not accepted the resurrection of Jesus Christ today. Amen. Amen. And without his death and his resurrection, we have no justification today. Amen. Amen. If we don't accept his death, his burial, and his resurrection, then, Brother Jimmy, we're still lost and out in sin. Amen. If I'm not mistaken, Brother Buck could correct me that when we were in Nicaragua there and the little woman that got saved to her said she had heard all of her life about Jesus, but she hadn't heard about him being resurrected and, and seated at the right hand of God. Amen. That was how 90-some years old at that time, I believe, or maybe over 100 at that time. I don't remember, but 95. Amen. And had been taught all of her life, amen, about Jesus Christ and about his death but had not been told about him raising from the dead. You know, we're so blessed, amen, here in the United States, amen, to be able to attend a church to where we hear the true word of God. Amen, I mean, to come in and, Brother Jimmy, have somebody to stand up and preach the word of God to us and preach Jesus Christ and preach the word of God with with great power, amen, with truth, 100% truth. Because the Word of God is 100% true tonight. Amen, Amen, they've rewrote the Word of God so many times. And I know even the King James here that we, that we read from is a translation, amen, from, through the, down from King James. It's been translated. But I believe, Sister Betty, that the King James is as close to the word of, true Word of God as we're going to get. Amen? amen? And whenever the Word of God tells us, amen, that Jesus, you know, teaches us in his word, except unless we believe in him, that we're not even going to see the kingdom of God, Brother Keith. Amen. Unless we're born again. Amen. And being born again, you know, means that we have been justified by faith. And what that means is that we've been moved, Brother Will, from sin over to the grace of God. Whenever we get saved, Brother Mark, we're not the same person we used to be. Amen. We give our life to Jesus Christ to be born again. We're supposed to turn away from the sin. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to turn away from everything that dishonors God. And we move over to the side of grace, Brother Jimmy, to become a new creature, a new creation... In Christ Jesus. The Bible teaches me that the old things pass away. Amen. Old things are, amen, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Amen. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of Christians today don't want to give up the pride. Amen. They want to walk in pride. But pride, Brother Jimmy, is deceiving a lot of people. Amen? It's deceiving a lot of people. It makes a lot of people think that, well, I'm better than somebody else. Amen? A lot of Christians 
think that they're better than the people that's out in the world. And Brother Jimmy, it's not, we're not, it's not that we're better than anybody that's out in the world. We've just been saved is all. Amen. How many people did you look at before you got saved and they'd try talking to you about Jesus and you'd think, well, they think they're better than I am. Well, you ain't no better than me. And when we get saved, we're not better than that, sin, that sinner that's out there in the world. We've just been changed. Amen? Amen. We've been changed from being the sinner person by grace to being the child of God. Amen? Let's look over in the book of Matthew for a minute. Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to give you time to be with me tonight. I don't have a lot of places we'll have to have you go, okay? Matthew chapter 26. And as we... We're going to read this. I'm going to go to down to verse 28 in just a minute. But last week we came in and we took what we call the sacrament. And Brother Jimmy had the people standing up here and a couple of them giving out the little cup of juice. One of them giving out the little wafer of the, of the, or the piece of representing the bread. Amen. Of the, of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said that there's some, and Brother Jimmy brought this out, that there is some that's eating and drinking unworthily because they are claiming to be a Christian and they've not been saved. But they want to take part in the sacrament. And he said, for this cause, said that there's many that sleep among you. But Sister Betty, they've some died a spiritual death, I mean a physical death, but many are dying a spiritual death. And they're asleep, amen, not knowing who Jesus Christ really is. But being justified, the Bible said, being at peace with God, over in the book of Romans there, and here in Matthew 26, and starting reading at verse 26, okay? It said, As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, <coughs> and broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. All of it. Amen. Not just a portion. And there's a lot of people today that's only wanting a portion. Brother Keith, they want just barely enough salvation to be able to say, well, I'm saved. And I'm saved by grace. But Brother Will, they don't want to get in deeper, amen? To letting the Spirit of God really move in their life. Amen. And to really feeling the justification, amen? To really feeling that grace of God in their life. But Jesus said, take it. Amen. Drink it. All of it. Verse 28 then said, For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for the remission for excuse me which is shed for many for the remission of sins that he said that brother Jimmy he said I shed my life's blood for the remission or the forgiveness brother Keith of sin amen Jesus Christ was telling the disciples there's no other way you're going to be saved except I shed my life's blood. That I give my blood for you and that you partake of that blood. Amen? That you accept that blood. You know, Sister Debbie up here just 
A few years ago, a man was about at the point of death, wasn't you, Sister Debbie? And you know, Brother Jimmy offered her a way of life. Brother Jimmy, amen, Florida said, I'll lay down my life, Sister Debbie, that you can have life. He said, that you can have one of my kidneys to keep you alive. And you know, Jesus Christ didn't just, and don't mean this in no bad way, I'm very thankful for what Brother Jimmy did. Amen. Very thankful. But Jesus didn't give just part. Amen. 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 Jesus gave all on the oh, glory, on the cross of Calvary there that day. Amen. Amen. He gave everything, Brother Mark, every drop of blood. He said, this is my blood, amen, which is shed for many. Amen. Many means for whosoever will. Amen. amen. For the remission or the, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Without his shedding of his blood, amen, I don't have no remission for sin today. I don't have no forgiveness of sin. Amen. There's not another person that you can find somebody that's dying that needs a, a, a transfusion, okay? And you can lay down beside of them, Brother Mark. Amen. They can put a tube in, you know, that, that person that's needing the, the transfusion, that's needing the blood. They can put that tube in their arm, and they can go over here, and they can put the tube in the other person's arm, and they can pump, amen, the blood out of one person over into another. Amen. Do the transfusion, amen, and help that person to stay alive. Amen. It sort of cleanses, amen, the inward part. Amen. But it still don't wash away the sins. Amen. It don't, it can't. My blood cannot wash away your sins. Your blood can't wash away my sin. But it takes the blood. Amen. Of Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. Tonight, it takes His precious blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. For the remission of sins of many tonight. Amen. I wouldn't have enough blood in my body. Amen. To save the whole entire world. Amen. But thanks be unto God, Jesus Christ had enough blood in his body, Brother Jimmy, that whenever he shed it, the whole entire world can be saved tonight. Amen. Glory. Amen. That's why he said, take all of it, Brother Jimmy. Amen. Take all the blood. It only took, you know, just a drop for me, I guess. Amen. I don't know the sins I committed. It might took two or three drops for me. Amen. But regardless, tonight, His blood was sufficient to cover every sin that I ever committed. Amen. Not only did His blood cover my sins, but if you're saved tonight, that same blood, amen, that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary covered your sin tonight to make you a child of God. By grace, amen, by grace you are justified by faith in Jesus Christ and in the blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary. Lord, Amen. If that, if that don't make us be thankful, Brother Jimmy, I don't know what's going to. Amen. It may not make us get up and run around the building. Amen. But it ought to make us thankful. Glory to God. Amen. Now, don't you look over into the book of Hebrews with me for a minute. The ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Sir. Have to get some duct tape on it. Put it back on so Brother Tony ain't throwing me the signal. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 9. I'll give you time to get there. Hebrews chapter 9. And we'll start reading verse 20. Hebrews 9 20 saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. The blood of goats and of heifers, Brother Jimmy, at one time was sort of sufficient. 
But today, that blood is nothing more than just blood, Brother Keith. Amen. The only thing that blood today does is keep the, the goats and the heifers and the bulls and, amen, the animals and me and you. It keeps us alive. Amen. The tabernacle was sprinkled. Amen. The vessels in the tabernacle were sprinkled. But thanks be unto God, the only thing that does gets the job done today is the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory. Verse 22 said, And almost, almost, all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. In other words, without the shedding of the blood of b the bulls and the goats and the heifer before Brother Jimmy, yeah. there wasn't no remission then. There wasn't no forgiveness at that time. Amen. And without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, today, church, there is no remission of sin. Amen. That, there's so many today that can't understand the blood. You know, it's not a hard thing to understand. You just have to accept it. Amen? Amen. You just have to accept it. I heard Brother Mays Jackson, you know, I used to listen to him a lot. I, 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 I love to hear him preach. He just had something about him, okay? But he was talking, said he went to give blood one day. And he said, the nurse come in there and said, she told him, she said, now, Mr. Jackson, she said, I can take this blood and I can take just this one little tube of blood and I can put it back here in the freezer and we can keep that blood for 50 years. And she said, you know, it, it's still sufficient. It's still good for up to 50 years. Said he looked at her and he said, that ain't nothing. And he said, that ain't nothing. He said, I know a man that gave his blood 2,000 years ago and it's still good today. Amen. I thank God that after 2,000 years, our brother Mark, the blood of Jesus Christ is still sufficient, church. Woo. Glory. Amen. He said, almost all things. Well, under the law, it might have been almost all things. But thanks be unto God today, by the blood of Jesus, all things, all things can be purged, Brother Keith. All things, no matter what we've done tonight. Amen. You know, the, the people that, mm, out here, that Brother Fred is guilty of, of just almost anything you can think of. Amen. There might be somebody in here tonight that's been guilty of just almost anything you can think of. Amen. I, I'm talking about, you know, murder. You may be, I don't know, a child molester. You might, you know, you could have been a bank robber. You could have been an alcoholic. You could have been a drug addict. Amen. You, you could have been an adulterer. It, you know, a fornicator. It don't matter what it, amen, what you have been. When the blood of Jesus Christ comes and it covers all of your sins. Amen. Because the Bible tells me that over in John 1 and 9, brother Jim, that he'll forgive us of all sins. Amen. And whenever he covers all them sins, you're no longer what you used to be. But you're a new child, a new creation. Amen. That blood makes us new today. Amen. And where he said here, almost all things are purged with the blood. Through Jesus Christ, Brother Jimmy, we are a blood. Amen. We are cleansed. We are purged today. Amen. Mm. We'll look over, in, if you will, the book of Matthew for a minute with me now. Chapter 6, I believe, before we want to go. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Give everybody time to get there. Whenever Jesus Christ took his blood and he purged us and he forgave us, Brother Jimmy, yeah. then we've got you know, jobs to do after that in our own selves. Amen. As a child of God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 12. He said, and forgive us. How's he forgive us? Amen. By faith. 
amen, were justified, amen, by faith in Jesus Christ. He said, and forgive us of our debts or of our transgressions, amen. He said, as we forgive our debtors, amen, that whenever, amen, he forgives us, Brother Jimmy, we're supposed to forgive other people, amen. 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 That means, Sister Betty, whenever Jesus Christ forgave me of my sins, amen, he washed me in his blood and he cleansed me, no matter what somebody done against me, Brother Jimmy, amen, it's up to me to forgive them, amen? Amen. Because most likely what they done to me wasn't nowhere near as bad as what I done to Jesus, amen? Their sin against me, Sister Betty, was probably just one or two, amen, or a few. Amen. But the sins I've done against Jesus Christ was many. Amen. And if you look back and you're honest with yourself, the sins that you've done against Jesus Christ was many. Amen. There was some of them we... Mm, hate to say it, but some of them we meant to commit, didn't we? Amen. How many in here tonight would... Amen. Would raise up that hand and say, well, whenever I was lost and out in sin, I meant to commit sin against him. You say, oh, I didn't... Mean, oh, I didn't mean to... Well... You know what? A lot of times we did, didn't we? Because how many times did we go out into the world doing something that we knew it was wrong, we knew it was sin, and we did it anyway, and we we willfully was committing sin against the Lord. And He forgave us of it. But how many tonight, if you do, amen, I'm not, if you do something against a child of God, against a Christian tonight, and amen, and well, I ain't going to forgive them. The Bible goes on, ain't Brother Keith, it said, if we don't forgive our debtors, yeah. right if we don't forgive our debtors, oh, neither will our Father forgive us of our sins. Amen. Woo. Well, I'm a Christian, and I ain't going to forgive Brother Dub for what he done to me. Hmm. He said, if I don't forgive Brother Dub of what he's done to me, that God's not going to forgive me of my sins. And if God don't forgive me of my sins, and I'm not justified, amen, I'm not at peace with God, in other words. Brother Jimmy and I stand before God on the judgment day. He said, no sin is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Woo! Amen, it's up to us tonight, amen, to accept that justification tonight, Brother Jimmy. Amen. It's up to us to be at peace with God. And it's our choice whether we want to be justified or not. Oh, glory. I ain't, I'm just going to stop right here, okay? That it is our justification to receive tonight. Amen. It's, it's our own decision whether we want to be at peace with God tonight. You ever talk to a Christian? And Brother Jimmy, they just are so just so miserable. And you talk to them, you say, What's the matter? I don't know. I just I just don't feel right. Well, why don't you feel right? I, I don't know. Just I just don't think God loves me anymore. Don't think God loves me anymore. Why do you think God don't love you anymore? Well, I don't know. Have you done something you shouldn't have done? No, not not as I know of. Well, has somebody done something against you that you've not went and made peace with them, and so it's why you're miserable in your... Well, yeah, but I I ain't going to. They're going to continue to be miserable, Brother Jimmy. They're going to continue, amen, to be miserable. Hmm... It's our own decision tonight. How much peace we want to be at with God. Brother Deb, it's our own decision if we want to have our transgressions put under the blood of Christ Jesus. Jesus said, you know, he said, <laughs> over in the book of Luke, Fifth chapter. He said, I didn't come to call the righteous to repentance. 
He said, those, the, those that are, are whole, he said, they don't have no need of a physician. But a little bit of what he was saying was, there's a lot out there that's claiming to be something or not, Brother Keith. And until we get all of our sins under the blood, we're not going to have peace with God. Until we get all of our sins under the blood, we're not going to be justified. But when we come to Jesus, and Brother Fred, we, we will openly admit, God, you know all the sins that I used to do, I don't, I don't want to do them no more. Everywhere that I failed you, God, I don't want to fail you no more. But I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in the blood that he shed on the cross at Calvary. And I want his blood cleansing me. Do like David said and say, God, create in me. Create in me. Clean heart, God. Renew in me the right mind to put on the mind of Christ and have Jesus Christ in our heart and being justified by faith. Amen. And what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. For again, St. John 14 and 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can you imagine what like never he told that the disciples that and them standing right there in front of him? And they had followed him. And they had walked with him. They had heard him teach. They had heard him preach. They had seen him do all the miracles. And he said, I am the way. Whew. Thank God he's the way tonight. Amen. Are you glad that you found the way tonight? Amen. That you're on that highway to heaven. Amen. As Brother Jimmy said, you've connected on that interstate that leads from earth to heaven. Amen. Glory to God. I appreciate you tonight. Appreciate your attention. Amen. Most of all, I appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. Yes, Lord. Glory. Turned over to Brother Jimmy. But how about let's give him the Lord of a round of applause tonight as he's worthy of. Amen.